Cortland Simmons with you here at the CS Racing Report on this 29th day of December in the year of our Lord 2018. As the calendar year uh, winds down, we go into 2019. Actually, it's my dad's birthday today on the 29th. He's no longer with us, but uh, he is here in spirit in terms of uh, listening to the recap of the Malibu Stakes, the last grade one of the calendar year of 2018 for three-year-olds going seven furlongs in the dirt on the dirt at the Great Race Place. Santa Anita drew a full field of 14. Uh, there were actually 16 entries, uh, but only they can fill the gate to 14. And the three horses that were really creating the most buzz were, of course, McKenzie, who we all talked about um, during the calendar year in terms of being on the Triple Crown Trail, got off of it after the Hawk. Uh, injury sustained in the San Felipe Stakes when battling with uh, Bolt Dior, a race in which he won but was disqualified, and uh, came back, won the Pennsylvania Derby, and then rested in between for the Breeders' Cup Classic, and he finished 12th, the worst uh, performance of his career, so he was coming in here with an opportunity to redeem himself and earn his th third grade one uh, victory of his career. Axelrod, another horse who had finished second to McKenzie in the Pennsylvania Derby, the winner of the Indiana Derby, the Smarty Jones Stakes, the local prep over the parks racing surface that hosts the Pennsylvania Derby. He also did not run particularly well in the Breeders' Cup, uh, finishing in mid-pack. I think he finished ninth that day. He was coming in shortening up in distance, uh, along with a, a number of graded winners. Bob Baffert also had Solomini, who had come back into training in this race, along with the Axeman, who had been a great at stakes winner on the Pimlico, on the Preakness undercard. Uh, so there were a number of nice horses in here, but it, on the final turn, uh, coming about five wide after stumbling at the start and deciding to, you know, pinch back a little bit was McKenzie, won it by four and three quarter lengths, uh, making up about 12 lengths in a race in which had a very, very contentious pace, 22.30 for the quarter, 44.92 for the half, and 109.97 for the three quarters, set by Calix Mann and Bob Baffert's uh, and, and McKenzie stablemate Nero, uh, who had been uh, stakes placed, graded, had been great at stakes placed. And um, Nero faded in the stretch, and we'll talk more about the disappointments, but five wide was McKenzie. Kenzie coming on like basically a locomotive, blew away the field and making that one, you know, supersonic move, hit jet stream, went into gear seven, as I always describe it, when horses accelerate nicely. He did that. He won in 122.48 for the seven furlong, setting himself up to be perhaps a contender for the Pegasus. But again, the burning question will be, after winning the Pennsylvania Derby and trying to make the quantum leap, of running in the Breeders' Cup against the likes of Accelerate and all those other top horses, going from nine furlongs to ten after one race in six and a half, almost seven months, can he jump from seven furlongs to nine furlongs and run in a race and pony up the cash as owners, uh, be willing to pony up the $500,000, half a million, to run in a race like the Pegasus, which will carry a $9 million purse? That's going to be question number one. Or will Baffert play a little bit more of a, a more simplistic um, game with this horse and keep him in California running some races like the Strube and then the Santa Anita Handicap, skip Dubai, although Dubai could be a possibility, and then go from there. You have the Oakland Handicap and a number of other races prior to the Ben Ali at Keeneland and the Derby Day undercard races, which includes the Ali Sheba. And, and then, of course, you're looking at the Belmont undercard with the Met Mile or waiting a, the next week for the Stephen Foster over the Churchill surface, which, uh, of course, is the host of the Kentucky Derby. And so th there, there are a lot of options for McKenzie off this race. Keep in mind, Identity Politics was second in here, still having fun, uh, was third. Identity Politics, four and three quarter lengths behind McKenzie, ahead in front of still having fun, who was a neck in front of the aforementioned Axelrod. This probably wasn't the best spot for him. I didn't really particularly like him or Solomini coming in here, which, you know, segues our, uh, us into the disappointments. Nero, uh, who was on the pace with Calix Man, finished seventh for Baffert. Solomini was ninth, so this is another question mark on his career, although I do think he wants more distance, and we'll see if this race will set him up for his next race. Uh, Copper Bullet out of the Aspewson Barn, very highly regarded, was 11th. The Axeman, another Baffert trainee, was 12th, and Seven Trumpets, a horse who had been stakes place, uh, finished behind promises fulfilled in the H. Allen Jerkins at Saratoga. Uh, he finished uh, 14th and last for Dale Roman, so that was a big disappointment, uh, making the cross-country trip to, to bring up the rear. Some other disappointments were uh, Kanthanka. Uh, he was, uh, of course, the San Vicente uh, victor. He was 8th in here uh, for Jerry Hollendorfer, so he didn't run as well as expected. But again, it's a sprint race, and normally McKenzie is on the front end in a lot of these races uh, but in a race like this everybody's fast and falling behind can it can uh, 
obviously be a concern, but in a sprint race where decisions really are very, very split second-ish and dramatic, everyone's going fast, and at seven furlongs, it's theor theoretically believed that everybody can get that distance. So McKenzie falling behind in this race, this is a case in point of who's got the most speed at the very, very end, and, and really it actually benefited for McKenzie to come off the pace. Be very interesting to see what kind of tactics he will employ when we get to the route races. There'll probably be a lot of races in which horses are not going to try to show that much early speed to forwardly place themselves in these eight and a half, eight, eight and a half, and nine furlong races. So that's going to be uh, probably, that's going to probably spread things out a little bit for McKenzie, and he will still be one of those type of horses you will see uh, on the front end because a lot of these horses, including the ones in, the, in this Malibu stakes, probably, the, as I said before, are not going to be that ambitious in the early going. And we're going to find out a lot more how the Bob Baffert trainee will fare in 2019 at the added distances. But McKenzie is your emphatic winner in 122.48 of the seven furlong grade one Malibu stakes by four and three quarter links for, of course, the ownership group of uh, Carl Weitzman and Mike Pegram, who got Mike Bob Baffert into the thoroughbred business. So a very, very big win for him. And also, uh, as we all know, uh, McKenzie is named in honor of one of their best friends, one of the best racing executives uh, in racing uh, in Brad McKenzie, the late great Brad. So a very, very uh, nice touch for them to end the year by getting uh, McKenzie back into the winner's circle in the grade one Malibu Stakes. McKenzie is starting to storm home in the center of the track. There's an eighth of a mile to go. Kalixman is the leader. Here's McKenzie finishing strongly on the outside and he goes right on by still having fun moves through along the inside axelrod identity politics it's mckenzie in a dominant performance pure class in the malibu